This is going to be an exciting week. I just feel it in my bones, and I just know that God has got the whole week planned out for us. Hallelujah. I want to talk to uh, all of us about relationships. Relationships, that is right. You know, I woke up with, and then of course praying, and then uh, somebody sent me a devotion about, uh, it is no good for man to be alone. And so often I looked at that scripture in the business arena. It is no good even in businesses for no one to be alone. And in marriage, yes, at the first Adam, when God looked upon him, says no good for man to be alone. And man needed a help meet. And that help meet is to complement Adam. The human was not created to compete. The human was created to be a help meet. At the same time, Adam was made uh, to be like a type of Christ in the life of Eve, receiving the word of God and then taking the word of God and keep caring, washing his uh, uh, relation with Eve through uh, the presence of God. Now, having said that, I want to focus on the other part and not the marriage as such today, but to do with relationships. It is no good for anyone to be alone. If you look at this uh, uh, picture right here next to me, you can see this dog and a cat. I mean, they just cuddling up. They have some comforting relationship. And likewise, in our lives, we need a, a strong, uh, healthy relationships with others. Let me bring that up on the screen and put it there. And I'm just going to... Uh, uh, do this, just uh, give me a brief moment here, and let's put that in a different color to stand out, okay? And I'm going to put the uh, relationships, relationships, let's see, there we go, and let it stand out, that is right, let it stand out, let it stand out, there we go. And the reason I do this, it's quick to pick up what the broadcast is about as well. There we go. Let's just leave it there. Relationships. Now, relationships are powerful. The Bible actually says where two or more are in agreement. Now, when we talk about relationships this week, I want to focus, I want to focus on uh, relationships in uh, general, when it comes to send someone a signal that they matter, it is so important that we encourage one another. You see, everybody in life needs reassurance that they are valued, uh, to uh, that they are appreciated, and when you encourage someone. That is right. You are actually accelerating their self-worth. You are causing their self-esteem to become healthier. You've got to remind yourself today that each person that you encounter in love is by perhaps divine appointment. There are those that will add to our lives. There are those that will subtract in our lives. Then there are those that will divide our lives. And then there are those that will multiply our lives. And I'm not focusing on marriage solely here today. I'm focusing on, it's no good for a man to be alone, on the basis of your walk with God, 
your connections, your uh, relationships with your family, with friends, and so on and so forth. Now, if a relationship is full of criticism, then that relationship becomes critical in a sense of uh, you know that before you're going to do something, someone is about to criticize you. Now, constructive criticism is okay, but when constant criticism comes across, we can actually uh, create an atmosphere of inferiority. That is right. You see, your words is what will reassure or release reassurance that will bring hope in the other person's life. And I want to say this to you, that God is in relationships. God is the Father. God had a son, Jesus. And then Jesus again said, uh, when they, he was questioned, he says, your, you know, your, your, your mother, uh, your brothers, and so forth. In other words, your family is looking for you. He says, my brothers, my mother, are those who does the will of God. When you have a close relationship with anybody, if they respect God, they will respect you. But if they do not respect God, you have removed a protective layer of becoming in subjection towards someone that is most unpredictable. Only God can steady relationships. That's right. Now, let's talk about abusive relationships. Because I think this week I want to devote it to relationships in life not one of us, we do not need any abusive friendships or abusive husband or wife or children for that matter. You see, there are uh, four kinds of people, and I've already mentioned that. And that is those who will subtract you. That means they will diminish your value system. You may be a very confident, brilliant business individual or a preacher, a teacher. You may just be a brilliant mom or a dad or your child could be brilliant. But just because you and I came through bad experiences in life does not mean we have to carry that forth into the next generation. And so watch out. For those who wants to subtract you, they want to divide your interest. Whether it is your potential, whether it is your business accomplishments, your spiritual achievements, or whether it is between you and your children. You don't need anyone that will come between you and your children. If you mess with mother hen, mother hen will be all over you. So let's not be foolish when it comes to those things. Amen. And so those who do not increase you, unfortunately, in, uh, inevitably, guess what? They will decrease you. You need somebody in your life that can say, well done. Jesus was a relational person. Jesus said to his disciples and to those stewards, he gave different talents, where it's five, two, and one talent of finances, even finances. You don't want anyone that's going to abuse your financial situation. That is right. He gave five talents to, uh, uh, you know, two talents, one then he comes back and he says, what have you done with your financial situation? Oh, I multiply it. Well done. You see, multiplication, there it comes. I multiplied it. 
And he says, you are you're well done, you're good and faithful servant. Now you go and take care of five cities. He puts them in charge. If you want to be in charge in life with God, then be faithful with the things you've already heard about God. And if any thing in life decreases your value system and knowledge about God, then that relationship will be in trouble. Having said that, the, the one steward took the talent and he buried it. And you and I are not called to bury our talents that can benefit others. The reason God gave you the ability that you have, the gifts that you have, is to touch the lives of people. You do not have to be locked up in a church building to do that. That is your daily walk. That is your daily connections. And when people bring, uh, well, let me rephrase it, when people are brought your way, it's because of God's favor. But it doesn't mean because those people have been brought uh, uh, in contact with you that they are necessarily going to be part of your inner circle. Jesus had 12 disciples, and out of the 12, there were three that he treasured, Peter, James, and John. In fact, in a, during a crisis mode, Jesus would leave the nine disciples at a further distance, that is right, in the Garden of Gethsemane when he faced a crisis, knowing he was going to be betrayed, knowing that he was going to have to face the cup of suffering. And he only took three disciples with him, Peter, James, and John. Even when Jesus, uh, and by the way, when he took them with him to pray and so on and so forth, you are Rabbi, God bless you, God bless you, keep South Africa sane. <laughs> or should we say America? Pray for us. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, beloved. Jesus, when he uh, went into uh, a critical situation like having to raise uh, that little girl from the dead, he would only take three of his disciples with him. You must know who you take with you. Because whoever you take with you in life in business transactions will either add to your life or subtract to your life or divide your interest or distort your interest. You know, unfortunately, people, they have been compared in the coaching arena. People have been compared with elevators. Some will take you up and some will take you right down, <laughs> even into the basement. <laughs> Have people in your life that respects what you stand for. Because when you respect, you will attract. When you respect God, you attract God. When you respect people, you attract people. When you respect relationships, relationships will be attracted to you. And I'm not just talking about a boy and a girl and a male and a female. God bless that too, of course. But I'm talking about having a constructive uh, a team around you that will have your interest at heart, that will care for you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. One more, I guess, uh, the time will allow. So it is our responsibility that we discern, that we discern the other people. You, you need to discern the hearts of others. You need to discern, say, God, let me discern what is right for me and what is not right for me. In my connections, in my telephone calls I make, 
You do not want to sit and do stuff that is not going to add value to your life. When you are busy, you want to reproduce yourself. You were made to reproduce, but that reproduction comes out of your intimacy with God. God made you. The Bible is your manufacturer's uh, instruction. The blueprint. The Bible, when God wanted fish, he spoke to the water, and fish came forth. Now, fish outside of the water that they were created out of is like a fish out of water. When God wanted plants, he spoke to the dirt. And so, plants outside of dirt cannot grow. When God wanted you and I, he spoke to himself and he said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Hallelujah. And I give them all power and authority. Let them reign and rule and let them uh, bring everything back in subjection to me. You see, your efficiency, your rulership, you being in charge, your momentum in love will last far longer with stability and peace if you always bring things back in subjection to God. Now, I'm not saying a Christian needs to be a pain, okay? Jesus was not a pain. When Jesus showed up, he solved problems. When Jesus showed up, he did not condemn people. When Jesus showed up, when the people could not catch any fish, he showed the fishermen where to catch fish. Though he borrowed their little business, uh, their boat, and sometimes God just want to borrow your office. Will you allow him to invade your, uh, the atmosphere of your office? Will you sit for a moment and just meditate? And just say, God, take over the atmosphere of my business activities. I invite you to have fullness in my office, my clients, my calls. Help me today in Jesus' name. Now you have made God part of your potential. You see, you were made out of the Word of God. So you've got to be planted in the Word of God. And when you keep feeding yourself on the things of God, it's like the fish. The fish was made out of what? Out of water. A fish out of water is a fish out of water. The plant when that plant is outside of the environment out of which it was made out of the dirt, that plant begins to change colors and begins to wither and it will not grow. Now, it may look like uh, some worldly people, when we use the phrase worldly, it means people that are uh, not uh, uh, Christians, they're not a child of God. It, it looks like they are prospering. But oh, the turmoil of lack of peace on the inside of them. The turmoil of anxiety and stress on the inside of them. But when you walk close and uh, close to God out of whom you were created and you keep feeding yourself with the nutrients of devotionals that I've even received today that backed up this message, praise God. You see, you've got to keep feeding yourself. Though the plant is in the dirt, you've got to water the plant. You've got to water yourself with devotionals, yes. You've got to water yourself with the Word of God, with teachings, with revelations, with your intimacy with God. That is right. Sometimes you may just read the Bible and nothing seems to really jump off at the page at you. That's okay. Every time we read the Word of God, we're cleansing our thoughts and empowering the atmosphere of our minds. And a good thing is to actually read the Word loud. You know why? When you hear the word, the Bible says in Romans 10, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the message of the word of God. 
So it is good to actually hear the word. I will read my Bible loud, sometimes soft, sometimes just, uh, you know, kind of looking at the scriptures and rehearsing it in my mind, in my spirit. But then also speak it, decree it. Job 22, it says, uh, we, we need to decree the, a matter, the end from the beginning. We need to decree things. Very powerful. I want to close with this. And then tomorrow we're going to pick up more on relationships. Because I want to talk about all different kinds of relationships. So abandon any abusive friendships. Abusive relationships. Even in marriage. Anybody who abuses you. They do not qualify to have you next to them. Period. We don't have an abuse of God. He never placed us in an abuse of marriage. Marriage it ought to come out of love. Love will build up that marriage. Love will not break down that marriage. Love will, is not rude in that marriage. Love does not keep a record of wrongs in that marriage. Love is not jealous in that marriage. Love always hopes for the better, uh, trusts, and so on and so forth. Love that is from God is not easily puffed up and uh, doesn't parade around uh, uh, with pride. It is a humility and an inward confidence of a strength. Hallelujah. Do not let anybody abuse that. Stand up for what is right. It is the responsibility of others to discern your worth. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Father, thank you for this broadcast today. Thank you, Lord, that you will help us to have healthy relationships first with you and then we'll have the capacity to love the unlovable we will have the capacity to forgive we will have the capacity to get on with those that are thorns in the flesh and maybe we can help them and get those thorns out <laughs> hallelujah give us the grace and the mercy to be sustained and to make a difference. Help us not to blend in, but to stand out so that you may be glorified. Help us, Lord, not to forget out of what we were made out of the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that we will find our roots in our manufacturer's manual. That we will find our roots in our manufacturer's manual. And that is through your word. Father, as this brother Warren Hunter, he says blessings from Nigeria. I pray, Lord, that he will be a great channel to release your glory, your glory, your glory. I want to prophesy to you, brother Warren, right there in Nigeria. And that is... I see a big water hose. It used to be like this, but now I see a big, like a fire hose, like a fire hose I see. And that fire hose is the glory of God. He says, son, I have invested in you my glory. Do not allow my glory to be reduced because it is my glory and the hunger for my glory that drew you and my power and that same anointing that you started with is the anointing that will increase momentum and the latter shall be greater than the former. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. If you've enjoyed this broadcast, Put a little command there. I'm not looking for attention. As long as God can be glorified. Thank you for the privilege to touch your life today. I just hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to me, I just, there's somebody else in Africa, Marius, Mimi. I just hear the Lord saying to you that 
this is a new day where I'm going to change some of your financial situations around. I am raising the bar of stability in security. Therefore, do not fret. Do not fret because I am the Lord your God. I have taken care of you up to this point. Will I not also take care of you towards the end of the race when it is time? For it is not time now, but therefore I will increase the resources towards you. I will connect you and I will affirm the things that I have. Fret not. Renew your trust. And there's a new realm of intimate faith with God. God bless you. God bless you. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. And Johan, keep prophesying the word of knowledge. God is looking for you to release the word of knowledge, the word of knowledge, the word of knowledge. Until next time, remember Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Bye now.